today we're going to be doing something super exciting. If you're new here, hi, my name is Kimberly. Well, this is actually my first candle making video, so hell, we're, we're all new here, aren't we? I'm the owner and founder of Drip From The Crip products, where we make creepy yet sophisticated products for all the creepy creepers out there. Because, hey, who said that creepy and spooky products can't be high quality? No one. No one. We're proving that, you know? So we have a super exciting day in store for you guys. Pew, 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 pew. Don't know where the finger guns came from. Today we're gonna be learning about how I make my coconut apricot cream wax candles. I'm gonna show you all of my steps, uh, how I make them, how I pour them, the type of ingredients and types of waxes that I use. So yeah, without further ado, let's, let's get started. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with some of the products that you're going to need. So we have our vessel. This is the jar that the candle will uh, go inside of. Next, we have our wicks, which is what fuels the fire to actually burn the wax and make that lovely smell that we all know and love. Next, we have some cotton swabs. This is mainly just for the cleaning portion. I'll be showing that to you in just a second. We have our thermometer, super important. That tells us how hot our wax is. Oh, look at that little red dot, interesting. That's gonna tell us how hot our wax is so we know when to pour our fragrance oil. Next, we have our fragrance oil. That's what makes our candles smell so delicious. We have our wax. I'll get into the type of wax that I use momentarily. We have our fragrance oil again. So today we're going to be using um, the Fruit Loops scent from the Flaming Candle. It smells freaking amazing. It literally smells like Fruit Loops and it's a really popular one. It's strong, it's delicious. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be making my cereal killer candles today. So yeah, I thought we could use that one. We have some safety goggles. I highly recommend safety goggles. I'll get into it soon as to why and you'll see me looking like a nerd in them. Um, and a scale. So I think the scale is non-negotiable. I know when you're first getting started, it's kind of tricky because you have so many products you feel like you have to purchase just to get started. You can try eyeballing candles when you're getting started. You can give it a shot, but honestly, measuring and getting a scale is gonna get you a consistent product. So I literally got this scale for I think like 15 or maybe $20 off of Amazon. Honestly, super useful. And then last but not least, we're gonna be using a pouring pitcher. So this is an itty bitty pouring pitcher. This I can make like two candles at a time with, but we're only making one candle today, so we're gonna use this little guy. I personally highly recommend that when you're first starting out, if you buy a pouring pitcher, they're super cheap. You can also get them on Amazon. A lot of the candle companies that you'll be buying like your fragrance oil and what have you from, they sell them for like 10 or like $15. I would get at least a four pound pot. This is a one pound pot. And it's, it's honestly, it was really difficult starting out because I could literally only make two candles at a time and yeah, it, it takes for freaking ever. Like two candles was taking an hour and that's just not time efficient because your time's important. And as your candle business starts to take off, I'm sorry, I'm seeing like shadows, I get scared. And as your candle business starts to take off, you're gonna be more interested in maximizing your time. So I think starting right off the bat, just getting a four pound pouring pitcher is just gonna save you a buttload of time, so. Okay, first things first, let's go ahead and discuss the type of wax that I personally use. So there's many, many different waxes that you can choose from, and it's all going to kind of depend on what kind of candles you want to make, if you care about how natural they are, what you're trying to do with them. But in terms of a vessel candle, so you're putting it in a vessel, essentially a candle that's going to be going to a jar, <laughs> you're going to want to choose a wax that is made for that. So there's so many different waxes. But the very common waxes that do go inside jars like this that are gonna have like a smooth and creamy finish and that are going to melt from the heat that is created by this jar. You have your paraffin waxes, soy waxes, you have coconut waxes, and then there's a ton of blends that'll blend some of them together for you. So there's paraffin soy blends I've seen. I personally use coconut apricot wax, which I really love, which I'll get into very shortly. And then there's also coconut soy waxes. There's a lot and you know, I recommend if you do have some money and some time before you explode off into your business, 
you might want to try testing out a lot of these different waxes just to see what you like and what gives you the best product because there's so many and if you have the time to test them out you may use one because you may use one in the beginning and then you think it's giving you great results and then you try a different one and you're like well this smells way better it's way easier to work with what have you so I would recommend if you can buy small increments of waxes and test them out um, before you buy a big amount. However, let's see what kind of wax Kim uses. So I personally use the, sorry, my nails are horrible, but so I use the Coconut Apricot Cream Wax from the Wooden Wick Co. And the Wooden Wick Co recently rebranded. They're now called Makesy. Um, but see, I've used a lot of it, but I actually personally love this wax. It's super creamy. It's a clean burning wax. It's more natural, so it emits less toxins. Actually, so when I first started out, when I was fresh to candle making, I didn't know anything. So I was a silly goose, and literally the way that I determined, because I was lazy and I just wanted to get the ball rolling, which it went kaput and didn't help me in the end, I just went to the more popular candle supplier sites and I literally just started going through the reviews to see of all just the different types of waxes just to see which ones perform the best or had the best reviews but I didn't know the difference between paraffin and soy and cocoa soy and all these mixtures so I literally just went through the reviews and I found a paraffin blend which had amazing reviews it was everyone saying oh this is so wonderful so I just bought a bunch of that without actually researching like what paraffin is and all like just what the different types of waxes are and their components. So what paraffin wax actually is, is that it's a byproduct of the petroleum making process, the coal process. They clean it and they process it somehow. I'm not entirely sure the exact process, but that's what paraffin wax is. It's a byproduct of all these, it's like from these industrial processes. So it's not considered to be the most clean burning. It's not considered to be healthy for the environment just because it's a, by a byproduct of those other processes that are not healthy for the environment as well. So I'm not personally knocking paraffin. Paraffin's used in a lot. In fact, a lot of the blends actually include a small trace amount of paraffin wax because it just makes such a beautiful candle and it's so easy to work with. Some information sources will say that paraffin releases toxins into the air. Other resources will say that paraffin is actually no more toxic than some of the more clean burning waxes or like the more natural waxes. So I personally don't think paraffin is worse, too much worse for your health than other waxes. That's just me personally. Some people will probably come after me and they'll say, ah, it's toxic, blah, 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 blah. But um, yeah, the research is just super mixed. However, I didn't like how paraffin looked in the candle. It wasn't as creamy looking. It burned too fast and it was really sticky and I didn't like working with it at all. So from there, I actually went to soy wax. If it does have less health risks than paraffin, I'm totally for that. Let's switch to all soy. So I bought soy and it was way easier to work with because a lot of soy waxes will come in more of like a flaky form. However, when I made those candles, I thought they looked great, they smelled great and everything. But after you burnt the candle and you started burning it down, I noticed that it was really chunky and I just thought it looked really gross. Like it was just like, ugh, like that doesn't look good. I did learn that the more natural waxes, so like soy, coconut, what have you, that's a pretty common side effect. It's just because it's a natural wax and that's just after it burns, that's how it dries, it kind of bubbles. So I was like, okay, sure. Like it's not the end of the world. But then I came across some articles about this new wax and it was called the Coconut Apricot Cream Wax. And I was like, I'm a bougie bitch. So of course I was like, ooh, like that sounds nice. <laughs> so I looked and I looked and I looked and I came across Wooden Wick Co. And they have the Coconut Apricot Cream Wax that I bought. Holy cow, fell in love with it. It's the most beautiful wax ever. Um, this is a wax, this is a candle that I made with it. Um, uh, this is my death to decaf candle, which I'll show you in another video. But um, I just love it. It's like a beautiful white. The tops, focusing, sorry, let's see. There we go. It's just like 
oh, it comes out like such a silky smooth finish on top. A lot of the time candles will have sinkholes, it'll be uneven, like the sides may shrink while it's drying in the drying process and it doesn't look super good. I have no issues with this wax, but I do have something to say about that. So Wooden Wick Co, which is now, uh, has rebranded and is now called Makesy, they are known to be more of like a luxury brand and their pricing honestly is not the most cost efficient. I think it's good to explore different options and find items that are priced well because everything from the Wooden Wick Co, you're gonna notice it's a little bit expensive. But another thing you'll notice is that when you're purchasing a lot of candle supplies, which I didn't realize this in the beginning until I started buying so many candle supplies, shipping is very expensive. Like from any state, if you're ordering these products cause they're all so heavy, like wax is heavy. When you start making more candles, you're gonna buy a 45 pound slab of wax and the shipping's gonna be 50 to $60. So luckily for me or unluckily, whatever you wanna call it, the only company that is in my state or even close to where I live, um, I don't live super close to them, Wood & Whitco actually has their warehouse relatively close by to me. So I can actually drive there and pick up my products and I don't have to pay for shipping versus all of the other candle companies. They're in Georgia, Ohio. So financially, it just makes sense for me to spend, I feel, a little bit more on the products from the Wood & Whitco. I could drive there, pick up the products, and um, yeah. That's my wax talk. So let's get into the next part. All right, step two of candle making process is you're going to want to measure your wax. So like I mentioned before, the scale is going to be your best friend because you don't want to go into your business having inconsistent measurements and you don't know exactly how much fragrance oil you need. You're going to want to have your exact numbers down so you have a consistent product. Okay, we're pointing you downward at my supplies now. So. I already have my wax measured. This is my coconut apricot wax. For one of my candles, this candle holds 10 ounces of wax only, but together with the fragrance oil, it holds 11 ounces total. So I measured out 10 ounces of wax, and this is what we're going to put into our melter and melt down. I use a pouring pitcher to melt my candles down, and we are going to use a double boiler system. So a double boiler system is where you add water to the bottom of one pan and then you're going to bring that to a boil and at the same time you're going to put your actual wax in the pouring pitcher so the actual heat from the flame is not touching the, pan, the pot with the wax in it. The heat is going to slowly melt your wax so you don't burn your wax. Yeehaw! Okay. We already have our wax in our double boiler. It's sitting pretty, it looks happy, and he's looking at you like, melt me, melt me, I wanna be a cute candle. Thanks <laughs> for bearing with me, guys. I know I don't have like a studio. We have to do this from my, the comfort of my own home, so. Okay, next, while our wax is melting, I'll typically try to, you know, do some other chore, some other jobs during the process because the wax will probably take about five, probably like 10 minutes to heat up and actually get to the temperature that we need. Next, we are gonna want to disinfect and clean our jars. So this jar has never been used before. I actually just received this from my vessel vendor. I use glass now. Um, and this is the 13 ounce Calypso jar. These cost me about $3 per jar after tax and everything, which I actually think is a little bit pricey. I think as you start to make more candles, it's better to get your costs a little bit down. Um, personally, I think it's a little high, but I really like the jar. It's super sturdy. I've never had one break on me in terms of like heat, the heat touching the glass. So I've, it's just been tried and true to me. I will take just a little bit of isopropyl, al isopropyl? isopropyl alcohol and I'll just dab it on a cotton swab. And I know what you're thinking, ah, fire and alcohol, that doesn't mix. But um, a lot of candle makers do this. At first I thought that was kind of crazy too, but um, when you receive your jars from the company that you ordered them from, they will typically put chemicals within the jar so 
no bacteria gets in there or so like mold doesn't grow in them. So you want to clean down your jars because you don't want those chemicals to get all mixed up um, with your product. So cleaning it with a little bit of rubbing alcohol, just a little bit, will help clean a lot of that out. And then afterwards, I actually run it under hot water with just a little bit of mild soap. He just had his bath. He's all squeaky clean. All right, now that our jar is nice and squeaky clean, next we're going to wick our jar. Yay! Yeah, you know, wick is just a, it's a good word. You got John Wick. You got Slick Wick. You got Slick Rick. You got, I don't know, it just, it's... It's just a good word, wick. So I love wooden wicks. So wicking is an untold, when you see a candle in a store, well, when I saw candles in a store, I just thought, oh, it's just like a standard wick. You just buy them from Amazon and that's it. Like you don't have to worry about anything. Oh, hell no. It's so much harder than that. Wicking is like a science. And I never freaking knew that. Like I, I thought it was gonna be easy peasy. And then when you start actually looking into like what wicks, wick sizing, the different materials of the wicks, it's a whole, it's a whole shebang. It's a whole world of its own. Each time I just felt like something always went wrong. There would be like a ton of soot. It would be flickering out of control because if it's the wrong size or the wrong material for the type of wax that you're using, it's it's not gonna work. It's gonna work, but it's gonna be too hot. You're gonna get soot. It's gonna be flying all over the place. So I, when I bought the wax off of the Wooden Wick Co, I was like, you know what? I've always wanted to try Wooden Wicks. I was always kind of curious in, about them. They're more natural because it's just wood. So I tried it out and oh my God, you guys, this like cured all my problems. I have no soot. I have no, like, if you use too big of one, obviously you're gonna get kind of like a crazy flame. But um, yeah, I think, I, I don't think I'm gonna go back to a normal wick, unless if I have to, because these are a little pricier, but honestly, this is the cute one that makes the little crackling noise to each their own, as long as the sizing, the material is right for the wax that you're using, be my guess. Yeah, I use the crackling wood wick from Wooden Wick Co. For my size, I find that the 0.5 actually works the best. It's the second smallest size. I think it goes down to 0.375. But um, yeah, this is my this is my Jimmy Jam right here. Next, you're going to want to wick your wick tab. So you can do this a couple different ways. Um, you can use hot glue. I have a hot glue gun. I was doing that. It was a little bit messier. Um, it's probably the cheaper route. I just bought a pack of these wick stickers. Um, I think this is a pack of like 100. And honestly, like it's so much easier. Like, so you literally, I'll just pop it on here and then it'll come off. Boop. You'll see it's got like a little sticker on it now. So literally it's just a sticker. It's just like those little dot stickers that you use in bingo. And then you're going to want to place it just in the very center of your jar. So I kind of just eyeball it. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, good enough. <laughs> You'll want to melt your wax to a certain temperature that your wax vendor indicates that you need to melt that wax to. So you have your melting point and then you have your pouring temperature. So my wax, I'm gonna show you. Most of the time, your wax supplier will tell you the details and just sort of the information. So as you can see on here, they let us know that the wax can handle up to 9 to 12% fragrance load. So that's cool. Mine's going to be an 11% and it'll tell you the melt point is 129, but that is not the number we want to go off of. We want to go off of the pouring temperature. So this is 180 to 190 degrees Fahrenheit. So generally, we don't really want to go off of the melting point. It's good to know, but if for purposes of adding your fragrance oil and actually pouring your melted wax into your candle vessel, we want to pay attention to that pouring point. So on my wax, they say 180 to 190 is generally the right temperature for pouring your wax. So when your wax hits that temperature, that's when you're going to... Hey y'all, so sorry to interrupt. I realized that I misspoke during this video. So yes, the pouring temperature is the temperature 
at which you want to pour your melted wax into your candle jar. However, I failed to mention that you will be wanting to put your fragrance oil in at a bit of a higher temperature. So depending on the fragrance oil or depending on what is recommended by the vendor, by your wax supplier personally. So for my wax, the coconut apricot wax, I actually add the fragrance oil at about 200 degrees. I notice that this will create the best hot throw. So I will add the fragrance oil at 200 degrees, then I'll let it cool for a couple of seconds. And then at the recommended pouring temperature, which we saw earlier is 180 to 190 degrees, then I will pour it into the candle vessel. Okay, thank you so much. Enjoy this cute photo of this cat taking a bath with some rubber duckies. <laughs> Back to the regular scheduled program. And depending on the type of wax that you use, it could be any diff it could be multiple different temperatures and at what point you add your fragrance oil can vary too depending on the wax you use. So you really want to look at the description and the instructions that your candle supplier lets you know before doing any of this. Okay, so as we can see here, our Mac, our wax, our Max, Max, Maximilian, our wax is completely melted, so that's awesome. So that means it hit at least 129 degrees that we know of. And then next you want to take your thermometer and you can buy different types of thermometers. I'm a basic bitch, so I just have this like regular thermometer. Um, I should get like, they have laser ones, they have longer ones. Honestly, the longer the better. But um, so we're going to want to see what temperature our wax is so we know if it's time to put in our fragrance oil or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I don't know if you can see that. My camera's having problems, okay. All right, well right now, my wax is only at 180 degrees, so we need to leave this on for a little bit longer. Sometimes if it's taking a while, I'll crank up the heat just a little bit. So we're gonna let this sit for a couple more minutes while we prep a little bit more. We will zoom away, woo! Okay, so while that's waiting, we need our wax to get a little bit hotter, so instead, I'm just, instead of just standing there looking at it, we're gonna wait a little bit longer. So while we're waiting for that to wrap up, there is a war, a full out war being staged online between people, between candle makers that heat their glasses before they pour the wax in and those that don't do that. And so your girl here, I used to, so, physics, what have you, chemicals, I don't know, but so if you have a hot piece of glass and it touches something cold, the chemical composition, what have you, it'll cause your glass to explode. And that is a very real threat that us candle makers have to be careful of. So many candle makers will heat up their glasses or their vessels in the oven with a heat gun. They'll heat it up um, for two reasons, and maybe, maybe other reasons, but two that I know of. One, it's going to decrease the likelihood that your jar is going to explode because of the temperature difference. Because you're gonna be pouring 200 degree wax, essentially, inside your vessel, and if it's cold or if it's not ready for that, it could explode. So that's where the safety goggles are gonna come in. I wanna protect my eyes at all costs, so I always wear my safety goggles because I've heard of jars exploding during this process, so I want to be careful of that. Secondly, when you pour your wax into a jar, what area do you, what area do you think is going to start to dry first? Typically, it's the outside because that's where all of the cold air is, you know what I'm saying? So the outside around the edges, those are the areas that are going to start to dry first. So the wax will actually cling on to the sides of the glass. And then as the rest of your candle settles and starts to dry, sometimes it'll cause a divot. So it'll be like a slope inside your candle. And it's just unsightly. It doesn't look how you want it to. It's not gonna have that nice like flat surface on the inside that you want. So what many people will do is by heating up your jar first 
and then pouring in your wax, it'll make everything kind of the same temperature. So it all just settles better and then the wax is going to cling to the sides a little bit less and you're not going to get that drooping effect. What do I do? <laughs> For a long time, I was heating up the jar first, um, but it was just a hassle. You had to preheat the oven, your jar was all hot and things were just getting messy and I couldn't, I was worried about leaving my wick in there just like dry and catching on fire. So I actually stopped heating up my glass first and I've been super lucky. I've had no issues, knock on wood, with my candle jar exploding or anything like that. Um, and I think just due to the wax I use, it has really good side adhesion, so I haven't experienced any problems. So I do not heat my jars up. All right, y'all, I just checked my wax. We're at 190 degrees, so we're ready to go ahead and pour the fragrance oil. Okay, so now that our candle wax is to the desired temperature we're now going to add our fragrance oil so depending on your wax like I mentioned before it will determine what process you do for pouring your fragrance oil now I use coconut apricot wax and this is one of the only waxes that I've shown or I've heard of that that recommends pouring your wax it, or pouring your fragrance oil in right as it hits the right temperature and then taking it off the heat. A lot of the other waxes like paraffin and soy wax will recommend that you remove the wax from the heat and then as it cools then add your fragrance oil. I've noticed... All right well my dumb freaking fan turned on automatically but coconut Apricot wax is the only wax that I've seen or experienced so far where they recommend putting in the fragrance oil while it's still at that high temperature and then taking it off the heat because it doesn't need to cool as much before you pour it. And I find that I do have the best results with that as well. Um, yeah, honestly, in my experience, the hotter, the better, the hotter you can get it, the hotter you can get that fragrance oil in there. It's worked better for me because it just makes the fragrance oil bind with the thank god there we go sorry about that it just makes the fragrance oil bond with the the wax better versus putting it in at a lower temperature when i first started i was seeing all these instructions saying pour it in in a lower temperature pour in the fragrance oil at a lower temperature and i was honestly guys getting no like you couldn't smell anything and i was so upset because i was putting all this work into it once i started melting my or once i started melting my wax up to around 190, 200 degrees, and then adding the fragrance oil, and then stirring a couple times, and then removing it from the heat. That made my candle smell so much better. So that's my experience. Everyone has their own experience. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is the fun part, the part with the goggles. Ooh, ah, ooh. Okay, my camera's about to die soon because the battery sucks, but all right, now that we have stirred our fragrance oil in, now we want to do the fun part and pour it into our candle vessel. So I have my safety goggles on because just want to be careful. I don't want any exploding glass coming at me, you know? So I, I you look goofy. I actually think they're kind of cute, but you want to have, I, I recommend safety goggles. That's just me. All right, guys, so sorry. My camera battery died. I need to get new batteries for it. It just stinks but we have stirred our fragrance oil for about two minutes just enough to get that fragrance oil all mixed in there you'll definitely want to mix it for at least two minutes you don't want that fragrance oil just to be like bundling up in any corners of your pot it's imperative that you stir it for quite a long time so i say at least two minutes is a good rule of thumb and now we are going to carefully pour our wax into our jar Try to be careful not to put your hot vessel, your hot pot on your glass because like I said before, that could result in a exploding candle jar, which we don't want. So very gently just. Wee. <laughs> Boom. Beautiful, marvelous, look how beautiful he is. Ah, uh, look how gorgeous. Gorgeous. He's simply gorgeous. 
gorgeous. <laughs> so it's super important uh, to keep your candle in like a temperature controlled environment so it dries as slowly as possible. You don't want it to dry as fast as possible. You don't want it to put it, you don't want to put it in the fridge or anything like that because by doing that, you're going to make the outsides of the candle dry faster and then you're going to get sinkholes, you're going to get uneven tops. You want it to be as smooth as possible. So I would put it just in an area that's room temperature, there's no windows open, just so I'll often put them like in my kitchen, I'll leave them on the counter so they dry overnight and keep the lids off for at least a day or two. In my experience, I'll keep the lids off for like a day or two. Then after they've completely dried and cured, the longer you can cure it, the better it's going to smell. Yeah, so after I already poured that candle, it's been about an hour. And as you can see, it's already opaque and it's still warm, but it's starting to dry. When this candle is completely finished and is ready for sale, it's going to look like this. Ooh, <laughs> this is uh, one of my signature marbled candles. So this will be my serial killer marble. See how it looks like blood? Ooh, the marbling will be a whole nother tutorial as it is. So um, yeah, that'll be on my list of tutorials that I'll get to very soon. But um, yeah, thank you so much for joining me today. If you are curious about any of the materials that I use today, they will all be linked down below in the show notes of this little, little below here in the show details. They are affiliate links, some of them. So if you click on those links and you go to purchase those items, I do get a small commission out of it. If you do use those links, thank you so much. It helps a girl out to keep this candle business going and these tutorials. Yeah, I had so much fun teaching you guys. If you are interested in purchasing one of my candles, you can visit my Instagram, um, which is drip from the crypt underscore uh, on Instagram. And my Etsy link will be found there. So that's drip from the crypt underscore. You can find my Etsy link there. Or if you go to Etsy.com, I'm drip from the crypt. <laughs> if there was anything that I missed in this tutorial today, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you have. And if you have an idea for a video, something that you're super interested and curious and learning about, feel free to drop a comment down below as well. I love hearing your ideas and your questions, concerns, and I would love to do a video for you. Anywho, that's all folks. Thank you so much for joining me today on this candle tutorial. We will for sure meet again. Until next time, bye.